Hey guys, meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. All right, so we're going to jump right into it. You see what's on the screen. Now, this is the feels like temperature. Actual air temperatures are going to get close to the freezing mark and then way below the freezing mark northwest of Orlando. We'll show you that frost freeze and hard freeze potential in just one second, but this is the feels like temperature. And with the wind remaining elevated, this should prevent a widespread frost still though. Everybody through Central Florida, if you want your plants to survive, you want to make sure that you are covering them because it's going to be a little too close for comfort. Don't want to play with fire so to speak so make sure you cover your plants everybody through central florida it's that kind of cold all right so this is what we wake up to on saturday afternoon cold front blast through late friday night into early saturday morning wind chills in the 30s for just about everybody lone exception is where we're kind of clinging right to the relatively speaking warmer atlantic right along the space coast but look at that palm coast what's up guys 30 degrees is what it's going to feel like on saturday morning ouch 32 in the villages 37 in orlando this is no doubt the coldest morning of the season until Sunday rolls around. Stick around for that. Again, 40s and 50s coming our way as we get into Saturday afternoon. So Saturday is going to be a cool day. This is now your time. I know it's like a day. We've been talking about this for about like the last 10 days now. Uh, if you have a fireplace, get some firewood. Make sure you have that stocked up if you want to just hang out and chill literally this weekend because it's going to be uh, really, really cold. Look at this. Wind chills on Sunday morning. If you're going to church or out for an early breakfast, look at this. Wind chills flirting with the teens in Marion County, Ocala, 21 degrees will be our wind chill. 25 in the villages, 30 in Sanford, even upper 20s in Orlando. Now, for frost to settle in, you need clear skies and calm winds. I do think the wind is going to remain elevated because a big chunk of high pressure is going to be hanging out in the southeast rather than right on top of us. Nonetheless, I think actual air temperatures may have a shot to get close to freezing, and the freeze may kill your plants, that in and of itself. So everybody through Central Florida, if you do have those plants that are susceptible to being killed or damaged by the cold, you want to make sure you're doing that. Now here is the frost freeze potential map. We're going to start with the frost part, and then we're going to gradually work up to the more severe, that blue color on your screen, into the hard freeze. Because there's a lot I want to talk about about that for our friends watching northwest of Orlando. This pink color represents, again, where air temperatures are going to get below 38 degrees. Now, we always talk about, since air is dense, actual air temperatures are taken about 6 feet off the ground. So what you read on your thermometer and our forecast maps are six feet off the ground okay that's what we verify the temperature with but right at the surface it could get even colder than that so that's why that's where that parameter is set so certainly if you're in that pink color this is where frost is going to be potential now i mentioned about the wind staying elevated so it may prevent widespread frost from settling in unless you're in a wind protected area still though if you are west of i-95 along the space coast and then even right up to the atlantic coast i want you to cover your plants just to be safe here it's once we start getting into this purple color for us in Coleman, Bushnell, Lake Panasofsky, uh, west side of Claremont, even Groveland, Eustace, into Lake Catherine, Donellan, the Villages, uh, Fort McCoy, Palm Coast, Bunnell. This is where we're going to have the potential to get down to the actual air temperature of 32 degrees. Now, I just showed you the wind chill. Wind chill does not affect inanimate objects, so it's not going to freeze your water. It's not going to mess with batteries or things like that. That's going to be the actual air temperature of it in and of itself. The wind chill affects people. We broke that down in yesterday's episode that it kind of pushes away your body heat, so people and pets, so make sure you're bringing your pets in as well. You don't want to leave uh, our friends outside. But we're going to have some potential issues with pipes, especially the exterior ones that don't have that foam wrapped around them. You want to make sure you're taking care of that, especially in Orlando, Fort McCoy. I, I really think if you're in this bright pink color, this dark violet, whatever color that is, where my arrow is. So here's the pink, but in this kind of purple-ish color, that's where I want you to really think about protecting your pipes. If you're worried about inside pipes let it run overnight at a steady stream about a pencil width and then let your exterior spigots also drip again outside to prevent that and if you can if you have time we talked about this uh, a couple days ago to kind of get that foam insulation that they sell at the home improvement stores as well and that's especially true uh in the gainesville ocala fort mccoy um because we had the potential here to drop into the mid 20s a hard freeze is when air temperatures, actual air temperatures now, get to 28 degrees or colder. And the best shot for that to happen is in the blue. And I really think we have that potential uh, all the way down here. Let me bring out my line because I think this is just the model forecast over here. So, I mean, I think most of Marion County, even, I mean, even into 
Northern Lake, we could dip down into the upper 20s if the stars align, if we keep that wind out of the north to really kind of push in that reinforcing shot of Arctic air. And when I say Arctic, I mean Arctic. Look at where our source region is. I showed you this on Monday or Tuesday. Um, when I showed you it, our air mass was up here over Greenland into the Arctic Circle. As of Friday morning, as of this morning, this is where our air parcels are. It's right around the Hudson Bay. So it's going to take this little loop-the-loop -loop right around the Hudson Bay and then come blasting in. And it's right where this purple color is. This is where all the core of this Arctic cold is. And it is just going to dislodge and blast right on in. I know a lot of you guys uh, from Facebook, Jonathan Kegis New 6, by the way, is my Facebook page. If you want to hit me up over there. Um, have been complaining about the roller coaster temperatures, and and who wouldn't be? It's kind of annoying. Uh, you've got to have shorts ready one day. You have to have uh, the jacket, heavy jacket at that, ready the next day. Look at what's coming though. Uh, in this greater El Nino pattern, which has given us all the extra clouds and has given us the way above normal rainfall to date, anyway, um, across really the state of Florida, but especially Central Florida. Uh, there's going to be some climate things kind of changing a little bit. Um, jet stream going to retreat. We have other things in play, and we are going to get real sciency. I'm very, very excited for Monday's episode of Weatherwise, 8 a.m. New 6 Plus, because I want to show you all of the different oscillations. We talked about the Arctic oscillation. Um, we're going to get into the Madden Julian oscillation. We use that a lot to kind of forecast in advance a, a flurry of tropical activity uh, during hurricane season. We don't. I should say the season that shall not be named. Uh, we don't want to talk about that at all. We're still in the winter. We need to get through this. But we use it also. There's some teleconnections to kind of forecast long range within the two to three week general time frame of what is going to happen. There's a lot of indications anyway, as I'm getting very long winded here. Um, but long story short, even though I already told the long story, I want to show you why we're going to be like blowtorch status to close out um, – January and start February. This is the Climate Prediction Center outlook the next 8 to 14 days. Fast forwarding out 8 to 14 days. So this is the last week of January. So after our big blast of Arctic air this weekend, we're gradually going to get out of it and then the blowtorch comes right on through. Sorry for being so long-winded. Wanted to get my point across though that there is some light at the end of this very, very frigid Arctic polar tunnel. The Polar Express. You can call it that. It's when the air kind of spills right over the poles. And that's what's happening. Coming straight from the North Pole. Alrighty, guys. I want to get to another check outside, but stick around towards the end of the show. Your weather pins of the week. Some great photos to show you. We'll see you in a few minutes.